so you have to visit Fallensby, West Virginia. Your wife has decided to visit Aunt Mabel, and you're going to have to spend the day here. Well, I'm going to try to help you. The first two things you're going to ask yourself is, I thought all these people spoke Southern. No, Northern Panhandle, we speak Midwestern. We sound more like people in Ohio and Pennsylvania. If you go below the Northern Panhandle, I don't know what that is that they're speaking. And um, the second thing, you're going to say, how do people live in such a small town? Well, we dump all of our money into our roadway system so that we can leave. Um, Pittsburgh's only 20 minutes away. If you come in from the northern end of town, you can see what we affectionately call the choke plant. Uh, yes, we breathe this air every day. We can see it coming. And it puts the wheeze into our Midwestern accent. Aunt Mabel has now offered the secret to her spice cake for a fourth time, so you have to get out of the house. I would start with Fallensby Park. It was built during the Depression. Lenny Bruce once said that he hated small towns because once you saw the cannon in the park, there was nothing left to do. Well, we don't even have a cannon in the park. But it does have swimming in the summertime. Uh, if you come in October, they have Christmas in the park. Personally, I can't stand listening to Christmas music before Halloween, but there's 100 vendors, so you can look at crafts and such. Um, up above the park is the $23,000 nature walk. Mostly just weeds. City Council greatly let us down. The only way I'd ever go walk on it is if it's in the fall and there's some pretty leaves to look at. Between the school and the park is a track. You can walk in a circle, get some exercise, get some sun on your face. Um, just in case you can't do that in your own hometown, just please remember, no golfing. Next, you can take a walk down Main Street. It has some really nice sidewalks. I've never had anybody ever bother me, although for legal reasons I will say your results may vary. You can check out the house that has a creek going through it, some flights of steps you can walk up and down, uh, monuments, taking a church service. At the end of Main Street is a sign about an American native attack, which for my money most likely never took place. Last, we come to the cafes. They're everywhere in the state of West Virginia. In 49 states, a cafe is a place you go and eat. In the state of West Virginia, it's a place you go play slot machines. Each one has five slot machines, and they're not allowed to advertise that they have them, so they use the word cafe. Uh, you can go in, put five bucks in, just play Kino if you want, a nickel a spin, and have some fun. If a serious gambler comes in, though, you probably should give up your seat to them. I'm not 100% sure a West Virginia jury would find the owner guilty if they should hit you in the head with a claw hammer. Um, tip your waitress or hostess, or whatever you want to call them, a dollar or two dollars. They'll probably bring you a can of pop as you're playing. If you win big, Give them a bigger tip, $10, $20. If you win $1,200 or more in a single spin, you have to pay taxes on it. So there's a scam that goes around where they offer to write in their brother-in-law's social security number. Um, you have to give them like $600 to do it. You probably want to avoid this. You really don't want to go to West Virginia prison <laughs> for your day here. Um, other than that, you should have fun. On the north end of town is a street called Archer Hill Road. It takes you up to Highland Hills. And the first left, there's a cemetery. Go up to the cemetery, you see a great view of Stibbonville. Some really neat statues. A really cool American Native Memorial. And it's the best place in town to take a selfie. Hope your day went well, and I guess we'll see you again when they read Aunt Mabel's Will.